Hello, my name is Marion Penner Bancroft. And I'm grateful to speak to you from the unceded ancestral territory of the Musqueam people who've been here since time immemorial. Today I'm going to talk about my book work, Two Places at Once, which you can see here behind me. This work is the final piece of a four-part installation entitled Transfigured Wood completed and shown in four different galleries over a two-year period between 1984 and 1986. The completed quartet was shown in, in its entirety for the first time at the Surrey Art Gallery, alongside Stan Douglas's work in 1986 in an exhibition curated by Jane Young and entitled The Mechanics of Memory. These four components were as much sculptural as they were image. At the time, I was very interested in the actual experience of art in the gallery setting and was keen to create an opportunity for the viewer to have a physical experience of both pictorial and actual space. Transfigured Wood Part One, View from the Porch, was a sequence of seven large black and white prints hung loosely two rows of three across and one single image centered beneath, showing the pulling down of a large maple tree, followed by images of the destruct destruction of a large wooden multifamily house, and then finally the beginnings of new condominium construction with stacks of lumber strewn in the foreground. Part two, which was entitled Local History Green Contact, had three components, including a wooden walkway slash boardwalk placed in front of a very large print, grommeted with holes and hung on the wall through those grommets. And this was entitled View from the Waters of British Columbia of Washington State. Another large print, a copy of an archival image, is entitled View of Men on Board the SS Beaver first steamship on the west coast of Canada, sent by the British to bolster their presence in 1838, which was just about the time that photography began. The third piece was a large triptych suspended from the ceiling and attached to the floor on an angle, showing three airplane windows on a black background from the inside, with a collaged image of trees seen through the windows. It was called View from Inside Cargo Plane, Dream, 1984. And I shot that by taking pictures from a bus traveling through a wooded area. And then I cut out the inside photos that I made of, uh, from a plane, got rid of the runway, and tacked these in with rivets. Uh, part three, Family Tree, consisted of nine black and white photographs laced together in three columns, showing my immigrant father and siblings in South Russia, now Ukraine, my mother and siblings in rural Manitoba, and my own family with my parents on summer vacation here in BC. We, we lived in Chilliwack, and at the time we were visiting relatives in Campbell River on Vancouver Island. Above and below each is a pair of images showing three different conifers, pine, fir, and cedar, and an archeological date of an indigenous shell midden, a small wooden viewing bench, and the remains of a cedar dugout canoe. So these were stacked, one, two, three, one, two, three, the, the conifers along the bottom. And so the final part, this piece, was conceived as the logical outcome of these various engagements with the material of this place. The tree becoming lumber, becoming pulp, becoming paper, becoming book. Here you'll see the original six photos that for the book were sliced horizontally in two, resulting in 12 pages. In making the book, I was aware of my love of the larger image, while at the same time not really liking large photo books. They never fit properly. They always seem too hard to shelve. So this was my solution, was to make a book, and here I'll show you how it opens up. 
you can see all the open pages there, but as a book that fits into a sleeve, it would open like this. And then you can put it back together again. You can put it on a shelf like this, or you can display it if you want, or tuck it away into its cover. And uh, it's a tiny, small object. And I like the idea of the stepping down from the large, large prints that I was making to this small object that you could handle. So with this book, I also was deconstructing the photos, and I was also creating uh, text, poetic text, that appeared on every second page, or, or yeah, every two pages, you would see the text. With these various approaches, to my own and shared history, I was attempting to explore the layers of my experience as someone born here in British Columbia, but not of here in a cultural sense. My awareness of myself as part of an interloper population, now referred to as settlers, was deep, but not easily acknowledged as I grew up. Growing up, surrounded by European art, European literature, European music, and mostly American movies and television. So this series marked the beginning of a deep dive into the history of this place and the complexities and contradictions produced by perceiving myself as both a visitor and a resident, wrestling with the awareness of the violence done to the people whose land my family came to and occupied. So the book begins with an imaginary journey to a moment of contact. So, that first text reads as follows. Impossible stratagem, approach this shore, do not land, keep freighters at bay behind, filled with lumber, coal, and hay, remember moment of something equal, amphibian escape. So here I was, Imagining, trying to imagine what it was like to be here when only indigenous people lived here. And then this, so you have the bottom of that photo and then the top, which is actually taken from the waters uh, just off Stanley Park in English Bay. And you can see one of the high rises on the very edge. Just a small bit of evidence of uh, what was to come. So all of these photographs were made in a single day, and I made them by first going out on the boat into English Bay, then coming back to shore in Falls Creek, jumping in the car, and driving to the Fraser Valley where I was born, looking for this particular landscape of dreams, of actual experience, and the kind of mix that you experience as a small child, kind of from even pre-verbal times to barely verbal times, to not really understanding where you are or what's going on, but having a sense of it anyway. So the next piece of writing, I ended up at this place, which is a, the bridge over the Bitter River on the way to Cultus Lake, where I used to go as a child with my family. And uh, it's also the place where my first remembered dream took place. The first remembered dream located better crossing bridge, blocked by native Indians. That's what I called them then. Green army cots, red haired woman rides black and white cow down burning mountain, the other side. An aromancer, one for you. So at the time that I made this, uh, there were blockades going on on the uh, islands in Haida Gwaii. Uh, they were locking, blocking logging roads. But this dream was one that I had when I was maybe at most three years old and uh, was many, many, many years 
before. So an anai romancer is someone who uh, foretells the future through dreams. So that's why I said anai romancer, one for you. So that's an image of the bridge looking across the river. Her third one, above Chilliwack, where I was born, there's this range of mountains, which includes right up here, Mount Chiam, which always to me as a child seemed like it had the profile of a dog swimming. You know, you kind of allow your imagination to go. So what I wrote, black dog imprint, white chiam, now Labrador retriever, not this mountain, swim above the town, your mercy mission still from birth to page to field imperfect. So this was taken just uh, outside Chilliwack, a little bit south, heading towards Sardis. Now another way that the landscape came to me or was part of my imagination was through a recurring dream that I had of these hills near Chilliwack where uh, and in the dream there would be a boat up there in the mountains and I couldn't figure, figure that out. But it was there nonetheless. So what happened was that I drove out there looking for this particular landscape of my dreams. And it was only when I flipped the negative that I saw where it was, which was a, a strange experience because it perfectly matched. Once I flipped the negative, it matched the image from my dreams, which made me feel like I had come from inside of looking out. So what I wrote there, reverse negative to match configuration of recurring hills of sleep. Find me in a ferry, Ararat, the drain valley, Sumas west is east, no vista from the fallacy of vision, mix it up. What I didn't know at the time was that whole plain below that mountain was a lake up until the 20s. We now know it because of the floods that occurred last fall, but very few people know that uh, the, other than the Stolo people of the Fraser Valley who were displaced by the drain of that Sumas Lake. And of course, this year, we, we experienced the full force of water seeking its level, as it were, and that lake filled up once again when the Nooksack River in Washington State overflowed its banks and flowed directly into this area, flooding the highway. I mean, it's only big pumps that are installed between Abbotsford and Chilliwack that uh, maintain that as farmland. And I think the government and, and a lot of people are having to rethink how we deal with that particular piece of real estate. And that's what it is, it's real estate, what can I say? So, the next is back here in Vancouver. And I'm off Kitts Point. So I write, please interrupt. The trees find breathing difficult. The weight of fumes encourages speculation, uncertain positions, pin mercury vapor to the current home. This pressure point is wind talking. So if you look closely in that photo, you'll see Mongo Martin's totem pole, which has been removed to be restored right now in front of the Maritime Museum down at the foot of um, Cypress, Cypress Street on Kitts Point. And the final image, which might have been the very first one that I took that day because I was quite far out into English Bay, 
looking back at the city, our very meaning lies on surface, lead to return and inhabit multiple horn origins, enough water to cover, make moss, cause cracks, fall fast and frame, float, washed in tears, obscene in here, over there, this white prison, black bird, wanted land. So I've done depictions of both the real, the dreamed, and the imaginary experiences in attempts to bring forward the invisible, but palpable energy of this place as not belonging to me. When I made this work 35 years ago, there were not many conversations amongst artists I knew around these questions. It's very different now, and I'm grateful to have these and other works brought forward as part of the very necessary dialogues that are ongoing amongst both Indigenous and Im immigrant settler artists as we work to pull back the curtain on all that's been deliberately hidden from view. The forces of capital, the seizing of resources, the oppression of Indigenous peoples and cultures through residential schools, and the theft of land. The two places at once title is one that I came up with to try to express that feeling of having, uh, being physically present in one place and having my imagination completely occupied by a different culture, by Europe, by, you know, whether it's Shakespeare or Schubert or American movies or whatever, that it was uh, not of this place, even though I was here. And I thought, this is this dichotomy that is, uh, that I have to contend with. And it's, it's not totally resolvable. And I've come to accept that in a certain way, that the uh, contradictions will persist. 